All right, imagine this. You're going on a trip. You've got all your essentials packed, including your laptop. You get to your destination and you want to do a little bit of gaming, but you run into an issue. Either A, you're running on a MacBook, or B, your laptop just isn't powerful enough to run your games. Well, there's a solution for that. Just don't play games. <clears throat> As if. Luckily, there's a way to utilize the gaming desktop you have at home from basically anywhere in the world. And that is what we're going to do today. Set up a cloud gaming desktop computer so that you can get your gaming itch from anywhere. Let's check it out. So the main piece of software we are going to be using today is Parsec. Now, a lot of you have probably heard of Parsec. It's nothing new. It's nothing secret. It's just a really good application for remote access to a desktop machine. What separates Parsec from something like just, you know, Windows RDP is that Parsec handles utilization of your graphics card and 3D applications much better. So it's basically designed for gaming and productivity tasks that can utilize your graphics. Now getting Parsec is extremely easy. It's available for Windows, Mac, and I believe Linux. So no matter what platform you're on, you can have it running. Now for most people, you're gonna be running this on Windows because Windows and gaming kind of go together. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is download Parsec to the machine that you wanna be able to remote into. While that's downloading and installing, you're gonna to wanna to create a Parsec account so that you'll be able to remote into your device without having to set up any crazy settings. We do have to adjust some settings though, and I'll talk about those in a second. So once Parsec is installed, you can open it up, and the first thing you'll see is probably the computers listed that are available to share or to connect to. And this is all done through your account. So as you can see here, it's saying that I can share my current PC that I'm on, as well as another desktop that I have on my local network that I can connect to. So basically the app serves as both a server and a client, meaning that it's serving the computer up to be able to connect to, as well as acting as a client to connect to other machines. Right now you are looking at the machine that I want to be able to serve or host from. So that is how we are going to configure the settings. So you're going to want to go into settings and go into host. And from here, you'll see a couple of settings that you may need to adjust. Obviously keep hosting enabled host name. This is what's going to show up as the name of your computer resolution. This is where you can change how you want the resolution on the host machine to adjust depending on when a client connects, meaning that you can use the client's resolution or set a static resolution on the host. Bandwidth limit, this is going to be dependent on your network. So if you have a super fast gigabit connection with you know a gig up, you can throw this to 50 megabits per second. Um, I don't have that. I am lucky to get about 20, between 20 and 30 uh, megabits up. So mine is set to 15. FPS, I would recommend to keep this at 60. This is just gonna to try to set a hard cap on the FPS, meaning that um, if you want to try to get 240 FPS and you have a lot of bandwidth, go ahead. But I can't imagine wanting to go that high. I think 60 is a sweet spot, um, unless you really just don't have a lot of bandwidth, you can lower that to 30 if you want, but I keep mine at 60. Exclusive input mode, so basically, it's saying only one guest can control the mouse at a time. The host will always be able to take uh, control from the guests by, mo by moving their mouse. I have it set to off. I'm the only one that's gonna be remoting into this. If you have multiple people, you might wanna put that on uh, so that the host can take over, but it's up to you. And display, obviously, if you have multiple displays, which display do you wanna share? Specify that here. Okay, those are the basic settings for the host. Uh, we're also gonna have to configure some network settings. So let's do that. We don't have many settings here, but uh, these settings are important if you want to access this machine outside of your local network. So here you can see client port and host ports. You can set these to essentially whatever you want. Mine are set to 8,000 and 9,000 respectively. You can leave them as is and it'll assign a default port if you want. Uh, that kind of ties into the next setting for UPnP. You can have this off or on depending on how secure, how strongly you feel about uh, setting up UPnP on your router for your network. Um, if you don't know, UPnP is universal plug and play. It basically kind of bypasses static uh, ports that you set and tries to open ports automatically 
And some people don't like that, and I can kind of see why I don't personally use it, but I'm not gonna judge you for using it. Congestion algorithm. This is Parsec's algorithm to kind of adjust settings as uh, the network speeds or bandwidth increases or decreases. I just have mine set to new sensitive. Um, so I guess it's just more aggressive how it's gonna tune everything based on the network conditions. Again, you can read through and decide which setting you wanna have there. But those are kind of the only settings you really need to set up. Everything at this point is pretty much ready to go. So now that that's configured, your next step is to go into your network configurations or your router and make sure that those ports are open to that we specified before. Because if they're not, you're basically not gonna be able to connect back into your desktop from outside your network. So I'm running PFSense. Um, if you're running PFSense, then you can essentially do exactly what I did. But if you are running some other network configuration, just look up how to open ports on your router or whatever uh, network software you're using. And it's pretty straightforward. Just open the ports that you specified before and make sure they're directed to the IP of your desktop. So if you look down here, you can see the two rules that I have set up port 9000 for the host, as well as ports 8000 through 8011. And the reason we have multiple ports open for the client one is that if we have multiple clients connecting to our desktop, um, we'll have enough ports. Essentially at this point, we'll have 11 ports for 11 clients if they wanna connect into the machine. And you can see the destination of that port is going to be going to uh, 10.0.0.43, which is the static IP of my desktop machine. So that's it, it's pretty much set up and ready to go. What I'm gonna do now is switch over to another computer on my local network and see how the performance is, not necessarily outside of my network from somewhere else you know, in the world, but just over your local network, meaning that maybe you have a gaming server or just your gaming desktop set up somewhere running Parsec and you wanna be able to game from anywhere in the house on any device, maybe from a TV uh, with a small computer connected to it, maybe from a Chromebook or a laptop or anything. Um, you can do that across your own network. So let's see how that performs. Okay, I'm loaded up into another computer on my local network. Um, this is running Parsec, but we're gonna use it as a client device. So looks pretty much the same from our host device, right? So the only difference is that now it's asking me to share this computer, but I can now connect to my other host device on the network. So this being the host device that we just set up, let's go ahead and click connect. Just like that, it hopped in and I'm going to run some League of Legends, not because it's a hard game to run or anything, but I think it will give the best indication in terms of lag and performance because it's kind of a, a quick twitchy kind of game and it'll be easy to see how the latency is across the network. So while this game is loading in, um, what you'll probably notice is this Parsec kind of icon that's up at the top of your screen. Uh, you can move it around anywhere you kind of want to, but what it does is when you click it, it gives you a bunch of settings for your client. If you want to turn the sound on or off, if you want it to be windowed mode, even what codec you want it to um, decode in. So H.265 or 264. Uh, if you want to use software or hardware encoding, even what resolution. So remember that setting from the host if you want to use client's resolution. Here's where you can change that. If we want to run it 4K, we can certainly do that. Bandwidth limit, this is where we can change it. Maybe we're on a better connection um, or maybe we're on a slower connection from the client side and we want to adjust that. And initial thoughts, it's very impressive. Um, I expect it to be pretty good because it's over the network, uh, over the local network. So. There's no real bandwidth issues. I'm running on a gigabit connection, so we shouldn't really have to worry about uh, much, if any, latency. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit here and see how it feels. Now you can feel a little bit of latency. Now, that's obvious, your mouse movements and all the video is going back and forth directly from that machine. So it's to be expected that you're gonna feel a little bit of latency. Um, is it playable though? Absolutely. Even on a competitive game like League of Legends, I think this is, I mean, more than playable. This is pretty impressive. I would attribute it to, you know, we're running at 40, our uh, ping's about 44 milliseconds. I would say it feels 
like we're playing at maybe 80. Yeah, across the local network, assuming you have a gigabit connection, you're not running on Wi-Fi or anything, it performs really well. So yeah, you can see we can go back in here and if we're done gaming, just hit disconnect and we are back at our main desktop. So the machine I'm using to run this on is actually my dual system build uh, from a video I did maybe a couple of months ago where I have a dedicated Windows machine in one side of the case and I was actually running uh, Mac OS on the secondary system on the back side. I basically just converted that Mac kind of backside PC to this gaming setup. And it's actually running a low profile uh, GTX 1050 Ti. There's a reason I went with that card. You're probably thinking, well, why didn't you just use your desktop? You have a 3080 Ti in that thing. There's two reasons why. One, I don't wanna leave my desktop PC on 24 seven in the case that I wanna connect to it in game because that's a lot of power <laughs> that it's sucking up. A, a Ryzen 5950X and a 3080 Ti, it's not really power efficient. The second reason is that if I'm gaming over the network, I'm probably not going to be running either AAA titles, and if I am, I'm not running anything at 4K resolution, and I'm not running it at super high FPS. So there's no real reason to utilize such a powerful graphics card. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do that. If you wanna run 4K 120 FPS over your network, Go ahead, that's just the reasoning why I went with kind of a lower power system so that I'm not getting comments down below like, what the, what the hell, that's, that's, that's not a freaking, that's not a good card to be using. I don't know why all my subscribers are now super uh, redneck Southern people, but apparently that's what happened. So yeah, performs great over the network, but if you remember, we opened up a bunch of ports and I was talking about how we can access this from basically anywhere in the world. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take my MacBook and drive down the street far enough away from uh, my home network, connect it to my phone's 5G and see how this performs over cellular. Now, I haven't tried this yet, so I really don't know, but my expectations are gonna be that it's not going to be that great. The latency is probably going to be miserable. I know 5G and, and cellular networks are getting a lot faster, but um, maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Let's find out. Okay, so let me address a question uh, you've probably thought about during the uh, first part of this video. Aren't there cloud gaming solutions already out there? Obviously, there's like Google Stadia. Amazon has their own. NVIDIA has GeForce Now. So there's no shortage of cloud-based gaming solutions out there already. And my answer to that is, I mean, yeah, they're, they're certainly there. They're certainly useful. That's why they exist. That's why so many companies have them. But I'm someone who likes to stay away from subscription-based services if I can and utilizing already existing hardware in my network or older hardware and repurposing it, I just find that um, a much better experience than subscribing to uh, a gaming or a cloud gaming service. And on top of that, you never know what you're gonna get in terms of, is the price gonna increase? Are they gonna change the hardware? Uh, what are the terms of service? How are they using your data? When it's all your own hardware, you kind of have a better peace of mind about these types of things. But if you're interested in those uh, cloud gaming providers and wanna see how they stack up against what I've done um, myself and hosting it myself, let me know down in the comments and I'd be more than happy to spend a couple of bucks just to test this out. So what we're gonna do now is I've come to a parking lot near my house, but obviously far enough away to not be on my own network. Actually, let me, let me get in the shade. This looks like bad lighting. All right, so the game plan now is to take my MacBook, uh, connect it to my uh, phone using 5G, a hotspot, and see what kind of performance we can get over 5G connected directly to my computer back at home. Okay, so as you can see, we are connected to my iPhone using hotspot on 5G. So what we're gonna do is open up the Parsec application, 
And downloading it on Mac is essentially the same way as downloading it on Windows. Same application that we were used to looking at before. And we're gonna go ahead and click, make sure you're clicking the right desktop. If you have multiple ones, um, you can go ahead and rename them. I probably should have done that, but this is our host that we set up before. So we're gonna go ahead and click connect. Waiting to connect and we are in. Here is our League of Legends screen. This is the host. It's giving me a uh, network performance issues right off the bat, which makes sense because I don't think this is designed to be using cellular data, but we're gonna try it anyway. So far, it feels pretty responsive. I know we're not in a game or anything, but... So again, while this is loading, another awesome thing about Parsec that I kind of mentioned before, it's not just limited to gaming. If you want to edit from anywhere in the world, maybe all your footage is uploaded to back to your, your main base, and you have a really powerful editing rig back there, you can essentially bring a Chromebook and use Parsec to remote back into your actual workstation and essentially edit like you're sitting in front of your editing rig back at home. So that's a very good use case for it and something I would be more inclined to use considering I do more editing than gaming now anyway, but let's check out how this performs. Now I don't obviously have a mouse, so this is kind of gonna suck. Okay, honest, uh, eh, okay. Um, you can see as I'm kind of panning around here, we are getting some lag. It's better than I thought it was gonna be. That doesn't mean it's great. Let's see if I can like last hit or anything. Yeah, you can see it's just, it's, it's laggy. I mean, the input actually isn't too bad. Actually clicking things and moving around feels pretty responsive. I mean, it feels like maybe 200 millisecond, 150 millisecond ping, but this really isn't bad. I mean, the tearing, the, the graphics are obviously struggling because we're on 5G cellular, obviously. This is a lot of data to transmit, but if you were on a decent Wi-Fi connection, like in a hotel, I mean, some hotels have shitty Wi-Fi, but if you're at someone's house or if you have a decent Wi-Fi connection or network connection, I could see this being extremely useful because even on 5G, the input latency is really good. It just, on 5G, it can't keep up with the amount of data the video is transmitting back and forth. So better than I expected, honestly. I expected to feel like I had, you know, 10 seconds of ping and probably drop out from transferring video at all. So honestly, not too bad. And they do have uh, built-in settings if you wanna use a controller, like an Xbox controller. All the mapping can be done directly in Parsec itself. So, you know, it's, it's really geared towards gamers and being able to game on it. Just like before, we can go in here, change all the settings that we want, uh, disconnect, and we're back to our regular desktop. So final thoughts on Parsec. I like it. I mean, it's free. It works extremely well. It's probably the best remote desktop software that I've used. And I have tried um, Rainway as well, as well as, um, what is it, Moonlight? I've tried a couple and Parsec is probably the best one so far. The only downside is that there's no uh, dedicated app for mobile devices. So for your phone or for iPad, I'd really like to see them uh, put out an app so that I can natively use this on my iPad. It would be super convenient to just be able to pull out a, an iPad with a controller and game back like I'm back at home in front of my desktop. That would be super cool. But overall, I'm happy with it. And it's something I will uh, continue to use in the future. So that's all I have today. Um, I wanna know if you're using Parsec out there or if you're using any cloud gaming software, uh, what are you using? Let me know down in the comments. But if you like this content, please drop a like below. If you love this video, if you like content like this, please consider subscribing. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.